up there? Uh, what's everybody up to out there in the BRR nation? That's Rise Levu that brought in and it's breaking in this Dirty Dan. What's up? Wrap up right here on the Burning Rubber Facebook page. Man, I'll tell you what. It's good to be back. Andy, thank you. I really appreciate it. Go over and check out my buddies Rise Levu's Facebook page. Man, they're a local unsigned band out of New Orleans. They're going to be hanging out with Dirty Dan here in the What's Up, what's up Wrap Up and some other projects I got going on for Burning Rubber Radio. So, uh... I guess we need to get to the point here. A lot of you probably got a question. Well, what the hell is a What's Up wrap-up, Dirty Dan? Well, here's what a What's Up wrap-up is, man. There's a lot of local series out there and a lot of local tracks that don't get the the uh, PR time that they deserve and the results and things like that, man. So uh, uh, Dirty Dan's going to try to do what i done at my former uh, uh, location uh, over there on the OTC, on the Cushion Media Group page. And Andy has allowed me to bring OTC and kind of merge it together with what he's got going on at Burning Rubber Radio, man, and it's going to be an unstoppable combination. So, anyway, what's up, wrap up? We're going to concentrate on on the USAC, all the USAC National Touring Series, and we're going to get into some of the uh, CRA and some of the other stuff they got going on down the road and in the future. Uh, this week, we're just going to concentrate on the USAC Midget Sprints and Silver Crown Series because I have some words of Dirty Dan wisdom that I want to put out there for you all to, to hear and, and maybe conversate about. Um, for those of you that have never uh, heard these rants from me before, you're in for a treat, man. So anyway, let's let's go ahead and get started with everything. And we're going to start off with the USAC Honda National Midget Series, man. And uh, September 21st, they'll be in Rossburg, Ohio at the Big E Eldora Speedway. October 3rd, Fourth and fifth, they'll be at Tri City Speedway in Pontoon Beach, Illinois. Your top five in the Honda National uh, Dirt Midget Championship is my buddy right here on the hat, Chris, the modern day outlaw uh, Bell. He's sitting in first, Brian Clawson second, Tracy Hines third, Jerry Coons Jr. in fourth, and Darren Hagen rounding out the top five. On the pavement side of the Honda National Midget Championships, you have Darren Hagen and Tracy Hines tied for first, Bobby Santos in third, Kyle O'Gara in fourth. Kyle Hamilton fifth, and interestingly enough, that rookie, the modern-day outlaw, Christopher Bell, shows shows up in sixth there. They have one more race at October 12th at Columbus, Ohio, at the Columbus Motor Speedway. Moving on to the USAC Amsoil National Sprint Car Series. Man, they just come off of a huge weekend at Kokomo Speedway for the Kokomo Smackdown 2. Man, there was some damn good racing there. You guys need to get over on YouTube and check out some of the videos what was going on up there in my home state, Indiana, man. 410 non-wing sprints for 10 grand. Oh, yeah. Anyway, on night one, Brian Clawson picks up the win. Night two, Double D, the people's champ, Dave Darlin, picks up his 43rd national sprint car win. And not only that, the, he backs it up the following night in the big show and picks up the $10,000. Looky there, we're getting texts in. We got some information on some big league stuff that I'm working on, man. But uh, more about that in the future. Let's get back to the, back to the USAC sprints here. Uh, next up for the USAC Sprints, August 30th in West Burlington, Iowa at 34 Raceway. August 31st in Terre Haute, Indiana at the Terre Haute Action Track. Your top five in the Amsoil National Sprint Car Championship. Double D, the people's champ, Dave Darlin, sitting there in the top spot. BC, Brian Clawson second. That Oklahoma outlaw, Brady Bacon, sitting in third. KT, Kevin Thomas Jr., fourth. Chase Stockton, sitting in fifth. Moving on to the USAC Tracks of Silver Crown. Uh, series September 1st, man. Chris, once again, man, Chris Bell's just dominating everything in the open wheel this year. He's going to make his uh, Silver Crown debut uh, at uh, DeCoin, Illinois, at the Illinois State Fairground on September 1st. And uh, September 21st, Silver Traxxas Silver Crown moves on to, uh, series moves on to Eldora. Your top five in the Traxxas uh, Silver Crown Championship is Tracy Hines, Jerry Coons Jr., Bobby East, Cody Swanson, and Chris Wyndham. Now, like I said, we're going to be adding some more series. Uh, to this what's up wrap up as we move along here and uh dirty dan's not going to rant every week man this is just a debut show and i've got some things i want to say that i couldn't get out on the burning rubber radio show the other night and i really want to get them out there um we are going to be uh, covering some lucas oil dirt late models some world outlaw sprints and late models the ascs like i said we're going to throw usac cra in there and any of you local track promoters or pr people out there that want to get your information out there to the masses man you know, I, I'm sure that I'll have one or two people that that uh, that watch these videos, man. So uh, once you once you get me your information at Dan Smith 47U at Yahoo.com, and I'll be more than happy to put your track results and what you guys got coming up 
uh, in these What's Up wrap-ups. No problems, man. No worries. That's what it's all about. Man, they're burning up my phone. All right. Moving on. Let's go ahead and move into this rant uh, so I don't tie you guys' day up uh, forever here. Um, we're going to move on to the Soap Opera League, NASCAR, or as I call it, the Soap Opera League. Man, that's pretty much what it is. It's all manufactured drama these days. But um, got some things I want to talk about there. Number one, uh, that, you know, all the big fuss about Speed Channel uh, going away to Fox Sports 1. Well, you know, they put all their eggs in a NASCAR basket. Didn't work out. No viewership. You know, I know the the uh, reality shows they had on there, you know, kind of done some damage, man. But uh, like I said, they put all their eggs in a NASCAR basket. We all know what's going on there nowadays. Well, those of us that don't live in a Pollyanna world and uh, deal with rainbows and unicorns all the time, we know what's up, man. And, and it's not good news over there in the soap opera league front. Um, now all of a sudden you have ESPN and TNT wanting out of their contracts a year early. Um, you, the writing's on the wall, man. It's just uh, it's up to you whether you choose to see it or not. Um, what what's the reasons for some of this, man? You know, I, I I I keep hearing this economy argument, economy this, economy that, economy this. Well, you know, it no vomit telling us the economy's getting better, man. So uh, um, you know, I'm not seeing it personally, but you know, then again, I'm on island time, so you know, really doesn't, doesn't matter, man. But at any rate, man, it's not the economy. It, you know, that, that may play a small part in it, but that's not what it is. And, and here's, here's a few reasons why. You know, the, they built uh, Danica Patrick, or as I call her, pimple tits, into the superstar savior of NASCAR, the next best greatest thing since sliced bread. We all know what happened there. But at any rate, man, uh, they're marketing her like, like there's no tomorrow, man. And, and those of us that uh, knew and followed IndyCar, um, we, we knew what the deal was, man, and, and it happened a lot quicker over here uh, in the soap opera league than it did in IndyCar. But at any rate, man, uh, she's sitting 27th in points on the year. And then you have Denny Hamlin, who uh, has missed four races this year and is not considered an elite driver um, on the, uh, on the uh, soap opera league front. But, yeah, he's missed four races this year, and he's sitting in 25th in points, two positions ahead of Danica. Danica's down there with the starting parks, man. You know, so right there, there's issue number one, marketing over talent, which is the theme of what's going, what's wrong over there. Then you have the junior fans. I, go ahead, flame me, I don't give a shit, man. It, it is dead true. There, there's a, there's another page that I was checking out last night. Somebody made a post about Kyle Larson uh, moving up the cup. Um, that's a whole nother issue. Uh, I think it's too fast, too soon, but you know, that's a whole nother issue, man. And I don't want to deal with that right now. But what I do want to say is in this post, one of these junior fans actually commented that Dale knows how to pick them. Now, just what the hell does Dale Earnhardt Jr. have to do with Earnhardt Ganassi Racing and Kyle Larson? This is what's wrong in this sport. People, people are uneducated, unknowledgeable, and here is the reason why. You have a fringe media that does not put out facts. They put out opinions, and, and they put out all the positives, and they, they pander to this junior fan base and this Danica fan base that is so unknowledgeable that's not even funny. It's, you know, we all hear about the dumbing down of America in politics. Well, what you have is the dumbing down of the NASCAR fan. And it's, man, it's like up here right now, man. You know, I, it's, it, it's, it's amazing. It's really amazing at some of the comments you see in some of these NASCAR threads and, and how unknowledgeable, and I will not say that I word uh, about these fans, but that's truly what they are. Um, the 43 best drivers on the track, you know, that used to be the same. No way, man. It's the 43 drivers that can write a check nowadays, man. This talent over marketing has to stop. It has to stop if you want NASCAR to stick around. It's obvious with the ratings, TV ratings, the attendance, the TV contracts, it's obvious what's going on. You cannot hold your pom-poms with your little pigtails on your little sandbox and cheer them on anymore. You got to face reality. Point blank, you have to face reality. Things have to change. You know, we was told the Gen 6 car was going to change things uh, this year in NASCAR. Bullshit. It's nothing more than a COT car with a few bars changed and some nice, pretty new body lines on it. Bullshit. Same boring ass racing. That's all it is. It's all marketing. It's all about the drama. You know, you, you, you people say that, that the, the drivers are too vanilla. But then when a driver lets out his personality, you slay him. What's that mean? Look at all of you that jumped on the Kurt Busch bandwagon this year. You guys was ready to run him out, hang him, tar and feather him last year. And I'm talking to you, mainstream media and fringe media. Now, all of a sudden, he, he's your best friend and he's all you want to talk about. That's bullshit. Hypocritical much? Yeah, didn't think so. 
Well, moving on, in my opinion, um, NASCAR, when they killed innovation in the sport, they killed the sport. It's no more than a spec series now. Innovation's dead. You can't do anything. And we all know that the basis for good racing is innovation, dot, period. C-A-S-A -A for what I mean about that. All right, one last thing before we get out of here this week, and, and I quit boring y'all with my comments and statements, is uh, Paul Hazen to the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame now, please. All right, that's all this week, man. We'll be back with another episode of What's the Dirty Damn What's Up Wrap Up brought to you by Shell Shock uh, next Wednesday. And I promise you no rants, just nothing but results from a bunch of different series, pavement, dirt, as long as it don't say IndyCar F1, uh, NASCAR or NHRA on it, man, we're going to report on it. So with that, man, I want to leave you guys. I want to get out of here, and I want to leave you to listen to some more of my buddies over there in New Orleans, Louisiana, Rise Labu. So here we go, and I'll catch up with you next week. Thanks for, thanks for checking us out. Oh,